Hello, my dear students, and welcome to this week overview. During this week, we're going to talk about the population size. So technically, population size means the number of individuals in a population at a given time. Sudden and dramatic decreases in population size can indicate an unhealthy population headed toward extinction. Ecologists often use sampling techniques to estimate population size. Then we're going to talk about the population density. So generally speaking, the population density refers to the number of individuals living in a specific area. It is calculated by dividing the total population of an area by the size of that area. Population density helps us understand how crowded or sprays an area is and can provide insights into resource distribution and social dynamics. So I have two types of uh, density. I have low population density and high population density. The difference between them that low population density, more space, resources, finding mates will be difficult as high population density, finding mates is going to be easier, but it's more competitive, more infectious diseases and vulnerability to predators. Then we're going to talk about the population distribution. We have three types of population distribution. We have the random, uniform, and clump distribution. So random distribution organisms arranged in no particular pattern, while uniform distribution organisms evenly displaced and spaced. Clump distribution organisms group near resources most common distribution in nature. Then we have the age structure. And before we go to the age structure, so technically population distribution refers to how population are spread out across given area. It can vary greatly with some areas having high population density and others having low population density. Factors such as the geography, climate, resources, and human activities influence population distribution. Moving to the age structure, technically age structure refers to the distribution of different age groups within a population. It helps us understand the proportion of individuals in different age categories, such as children, working age adults, and elderly aged individuals. Age structure is important for studying population dynamics planning for healthcare and social services, and predicting future population trends. Also, we have the gender ratios, which are the sex ratios. So technically, gender ratios refer to the proportion of males to females within a population. It helps us understand the balance or imbalance of genders in a given area. Gender ratio can be influenced by various factors, such as cultural norms, migration patterns, and social dynamics. It is important to monitor gender ratios to identify any gender imbalances and address potential issues related to gender equality and social well-being. Moving to the birth and death rate, so let's talk about this for a minute. So birth rate refers to the number of births per 1,000 individuals in a population within a specific time period. It helps us understand the rate at which new individuals are being added to the population. Death rate, on the other hand, refers to the number of deaths per 1,000 individuals in a population within a specific time period. It helps us understand the rate at which individuals are dying within population. So, after that, by comparing birth and death rates, we can gain insight into population growth or decline. If the birth rate exceeds the death rate, the population tends to grow. While if the death rate exceeds the birth rate, the population tends to decline. These rates are important for understanding population dynamics and for planning health care and social services as well. 